Good afternoon, everybody. I want to talk to you today about how to make a classroom alive and ready for tomorrow. So please think about school education today. Whose child in the audience ever took place in a peer learning experience? Whose child in the audience has had a teacher using an interactive whiteboard? While using technology in the classroom or taking part in a peer learning experience are fantastic steps in the evolution of learning. But where is all this going? Well, actually, it goes very well together. So why not combine them, taking the best of each one's characteristics? Well, today I'm going to give you examples in the language domain because it's my specialty. But my examples can be applied to any other school subject. And I have three points to ponder. First point, as it is the case with other school subjects, language is not an abstraction. It is alive all around us, in the street, at the supermarkets. So we need real proactive teaching in a real communication situation. And so this proactive teaching in real communication situation is not something new. It's the concept of interaction. And interaction is not something new. I went to the European school, and at the European school, everything is based on interaction. From the age of three or four, we're talking in all of the European languages. In the classroom, in the playground, we were even singing together in all of these European languages. And so by the age of, three or, uh, of seven or eight, I already knew the Italian song Bella Ciao, and Lucy in the Sky was Diamond. So nothing new with the concept of interaction. But there is something new. You can now make your students talk in the classroom. And why not? With the help of the technology. Unfortunately, this is what is happening today with technology in the classroom. Please have a look at this picture. What do you see really? Do you see more interaction between the students? Obviously not. And this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about shared technologies. Technology that enable more connections between the students. Let me show you an example of this. The so-called project, Mystery Project. And in this project, one class is chatting with another class, one of the thousand other classes around the world. And one class language is the learning language of the other. And those students have to talk and to ask questions in order to uh, get some information, like the school name, the city name, the, the country. And they have to guess that before the other class guesses theirs. Do you see how much this is interaction? There is no silence in this classroom, no. There is talking, there is laughing, and there is fast-track learning. Interaction, this is what we want in our classrooms. Second point. Research already proves that exams and reprimands close the brain. They cause frustration, they cause shame, and they cause negative stress. And negative stress causes sleeping problem, concentration problem, eating problem. So we really have to shift away from using exams and reprimands to uh, using encouragements, because encouragements open the brain. As Ken Robinson already said in a previous talk, when you're not afraid of being wrong, when you're not afraid of being punished, then you have a try, and when you try, you have a chance to succeed. So we really have to shift away from using the red pen method to creating a pleasurable environment. Now you want to know how we bring pleasure into the classroom. Well, think about the moments when you enjoy talking. Perhaps you do now to comment my presentation. But otherwise, usually, people love talking in natural settings, like with some friends. Another great way of finding something pleasurable is using games. Now, I can hear you. You are thinking, like, school is not a place for games. Well, 
Sorry, but we, we have to challenge this assumption because all of your childhood, all of your adolescence was marked with games that were structuring for you. Please remember the time when we, you were playing hide and seek with your brothers and sister and you were searching for what was a good place to hide, like under a bed or into a closet. And you were thinking about bad places to hide just behind a door. And that was really structuring for you. And all of your childhood, all of your adolescence was marked with those kinds of games. So we can use these games in order to support learning. And we can even add technology to this. Numeric games that enable learning are called serious games. And serious games in the domain of language are very numerous and successful. You can look into your smartphone application, you will see a list of them. Not now, not now, after. But they are still like individual games. And once, once again, I want to insist on that. We need collective activities. So let me show you a collective activity. And this time I will use a university example. Um, you know, at university, I give very theoretical lessons. Sometimes I, I give a um, case study, sometimes I, I ask for a group presentation, but most of the time my students are very stuck on their chair and very passive. And so, uh, at one moment, I had to admit a, f a fact of modern life, that during my lessons, all of my students uh, are connected on their laptops or on their smartphones. They are connected to chat with their friends, they are connected in order to verify what I'm saying. Yes, they do that. And so one day I decided to use this connection to the purpose of my lesson, for the purpose of my lesson. And so I asked them to install a poll application in order to make them vote for two or three times a lesson. Let me give you an example of use of this poll application. So, for example, I give a lesson on interpersonal communication. At one point uh, of, my, uh, of my lesson, I ask this question. In an SMS context, which of these salutations do we use the most? And I ask them to vote between good morning, hello, hi, yo, hey, yellow, howdy. And um, so I ask them to talk together for two or three minutes. Very important. And then afterwards, they have to vote. And their votes are anonymous. And then I show the actual results of their vote. Like here, you can see that for my students, good morning, that is mostly used in an SMS context. <laughs> then I compare that to actual research results. And of course, research shows that it's high because it's shorter that is mostly used. And my students love this kind of activity. Yeah, really. Some of them love to, love to be in line with research results, and others, well, they, they love not to be in line with research results. And they tell me why, and we talk together. Reaction. This is what I want in my classroom. Third point. Have you ever noticed that our mainstream school produces clones? Clones, yes, clones. In a society that, on the contrary, values originality, individuality. Yes, society encourages you to be a high potential, and you over there to be the voice, and you over there to be a top chef. So, on one side, society encourages you to be original people, and on the other, society educates, you, educates your children as clones. So, um, Howard Garner from Harvard University um, proved that there are eight different kinds of intelligence. You have, for example, musical intel intelligence or interpersonal intelligence. Do you think all of these different kinds of intelligence will learn the same way? So, no, we have to differentiate. And differentiated learning uh, has already been uh, accepted by a series of countries like Switzerland, Germany or Finland. These countries understood that there are different avenues to learning. And why not adding cooperation and co-construction to this? Because once again, we want the children to work together and to talk to each other and to learn from each other. And the teachers, well, they would become the, like coaches in their lessons. Some other school system, um, some other countries would like to use differentiated learning in their schools, but don't know how to make it. So what is the point with differentiated learning? How do we make that? Well, the main point is that 
you have to let the student learn at its own style and at its own rhythm. So for example, you can take a classroom and split it in groups of three or four, <coughs> Sorry, and you can use activities that enable different kinds of talents and different levels. And why not add technology to this? Let me show you a last example, the French project called Tricte. The aim, of the, uh, the aim of the project is to teach spelling. And so you have a teacher who dictates a series of sentences of maximum 140 characters, you know, a tweet. And so the, each child has to write down, but then doesn't have to give back to the teacher, no, no. The classroom is split in groups of three or four, and the students have to talk together and to decide and to agree on what is the good spelling of the sentence. And when they agree, just when they agree, they tweet it to one of the other classes around the world. And this other class has to correct their tweets and tweet back the correction using specific hashtags. Can you see how much this is a reflexive activity, how much um, they had to listen to the teacher, to practice, and then to talk together and to, to defend their point of view. How much this is differentiated learning, because this activity values a lot of different talents, from very studious students who know very well the grammatical rules, to little techno geeks who know how to use hashtags, through very communicative people who will lead the team. And so this is peer learning, this is differentiated learning, this is what we want in our classrooms. And so, if we want to make ready the world of tomorrow, we have to use the insights and the technology we have today. First, we can leave the textbooks aside for a while to make the classroom a little more interactive. Second, we can use a little technology in your classroom uh, in order to make the classroom a little more fun. And third, with the right use of shared technologies and an open pedagogy, we can honor every student's special talents. Now, today I have given you my examples, my solutions. Now, I would like to invite you to find your solutions for your classrooms and to create a generation that is ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much.